Well, good morning, good morning. Great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I don't take for granted this opportunity to be here. Amen. God is so wonderful to us. Would you agree with that this morning? Yeah. Come on now. Amen. All right. So Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Amen. This is one of those sermons that you could get a misunderstanding um, and uh, also... I was tempted to not obey the Holy Spirit and preach something else. But hey, listen, the CEO is God in charge. Amen. I am just but a servant. So we're preaching what he told me to preach. Amen. Luke chapter 8. You know, what we're into and into in terms of season is one of my favorite seasons in the world. It is summertime. Come on now, put your hands up all you summer babies in the place you're born in summer. Come on, people waving at me, amen. You know what I'm talking about. There's a connection to the summer months, there's a connection to the heat. Uh, when summer starts to come, you know, things start happening. People are, all of a sudden, they're more joyous. You know, there's a thing called SAD, seasonal affective disorder. Uh, when it's grey, people actually get a bit sad and so on. But when the sun's out, the moods change, it's good. Uh, I love the fact you can go in the cool and you, you can smell the barbecues in the air. Come on now. Or is that just me? Is that, am I just greedy? All right. <laughs> but summertime is great. Things just look better. Things are just brighter. The days are longer. You wake up. The sun, uh, the, the sun stays up uh, uh, even late until the evening. It's great. It's a fantastic time. Uh, the kids are off school. People are doing stuff. It's, it's just a great time. People are just... Uh, Fellowshipping and stuff is a fantastic time. There's so many songs made about summertime and so on and so forth. Uh, but I love everything about summer. But there is, as I start to grow older, um, something that uh, I, I don't particularly like about summertime. You see, because when the heat goes up, all of a sudden, the clothes start to come off. Now... <laughs> Now bear with me with this one. Come on now. <laughs> I'm not going to... Uh, uh, it may seem like I'm going to be talking about a particular thing right now, but just bear with me. This is the word of God we're talking about. Amen. Because as I was younger in school and so on, I didn't really notice. I didn't really notice that type of thing. But when Jesus came in my life, uh, my, my life was changed or transformed. Summertime started to get a bit weird. I was like, oh, oh hold on a second. The heat goes up, the clothes come off. And as I'm getting older, it seems, I don't know if it's just me, it seems that we're getting more brazen with it as well. That we're starting to leave nothing to the imagination. Uh, you know, you used to have to imagine things, but now you don't. Um, so I love summer. Summer's coming and stuff, but I know there's going to be a time I'm going to have to walk out of my street and there's sometimes I'm going to be looking at my shoes. I just know. I just know. I should be looking at the gorgeous creation, enjoying the sun. But sometimes I might have to get some extra dark sunglasses. Because there's things that, and it's, it's, this is both, you know, this is both men and women. This isn't just related to one. This is both men and women. You see the guys, they, they just go to the gym just before they go out to the park just to make sure everything is pumped. And they're wearing a, a vest that's two sizes too small for them. Uh, 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 and acting as if, yeah, this is my vest. No, that's your younger brother's vest, bro. <laughs> Put some clothes on, G. And then my dear sisters, oh Lord, there's no swimming pool in sight, there's no seat in sight, but you're wearing bathing costumes. It's like, wait, you're going shopping in Tesco's like that? Come on. So when the heat comes up, for some reason, the clothes come off. But listen, I don't want to spend time talking about the physical because there is a link between uh, uh, how we cover ourselves or, or, or the lack of covering. And I want to preach a sermon of entitled, Put Some Clothes On. <laughs> Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, Put Some Clothes On. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Listen, I don't mean to get anybody. I'm just, hey, that's the title of the sermon. Hey, if, it, if the conviction, if the cap fits, wear it. All right. 
Luke chapter 8, we're going to read an account, verse number 26. And there's many things. This, this account, there's many things you can pick up. The, the Word of God is full. There's, there's so much you can pick out of. But I just want to pick out, I want to focus on certain elements. Uh, we're going to read the whole account. I'm going to pick out uh, and let God speak to us. Who wants to let God speak to us this morning? Come on now. You don't want to hear from me right now. You want to hear from God. Can you say amen in this place? Uh, Come on, so we're going to read, we're going to hear from uh, from God, we're going to read the Word of God. Luke chapter 8, verse number 26. This is a a portion of Scripture that talks about a man that had been completely set free. We're going to read from verse number 26. Follow along with me. The Bible says, uh, Then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee. And when he stepped out on the land, there he met a certain man from a city who had demons uh, for a long time. And look what the Bible says. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, the Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it often seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles. And he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, what is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons entered him. And they begged him at the, uh, that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. Now a herd of many swine was feeding there on the mountain, so they begged him that he would enter the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and drowned. When those who fed them saw what had happened, they fled and told to the city and in the country. And look at this in verse number 35. Then they went out to see what happened and came to see Jesus and found the man whom the demons had departed sitting at the feet of Jesus clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid and they also who had seen it told them by what means uh, he had been demon possessed and was healed put some clothes on I want to consider with you first about being uncovered you see this is the most detailed description we have in the word of God about someone being demon possessed Luke, he's a physician and he writes with detail. I, you know, that's, I think out of the four gospel, gospels, John and Luke, they come up quite close together as my favourite to gospels. But Luke, he gives great description of what happens and he describes that this man had demons for a long time. He described where his dwelling place was. Uh, Most of us are are looking at different houses in different areas. This one went to the graveyard. That's where he dwelt. It described that the demon, what he used to do, used to seize him and throw him into certain places, have him doing certain things. It's the most descriptive account of anyone being demon-possessed we have in the gospel. But of course, you know where I'm going with this. There's one detail about this account that I find very interesting that Luke decided, listen, I have to, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he did, I have to add this piece of detail just so you know Everything about this man, and it's found in verse number 27. It says, a certain man in the city who had, his, who had a demon for a long time wore no clothes. Now, apart from that being just plain up embarrassing, I believe there is more things to consider about his state of dress. <laughs> There's more things to consider. There is a link because many times we see in the Bible, but also in life as well, the things that we involve in, the things that we do in the natural have a spiritual link. You know, we are natural beings, but our life, our being is more spiritual than it is natural. Did you know that? We pay, we pay so much attention to the natural and forget the spiritual side of things. But I believe that Luke telling us this man had no clothes, there was more of a spiritual link to that which we want to uncover today. So what do clothes do? Think about that. Think about the natural. What do clothes do? The first thing it does, it is provides dig- dignity. Now, no one, okay, no one in their right mind, let's put that in there, no one in their right mind would feel confident going out shopping, doing their weekly shop completely naked. I don't think anyone here, if I look around, I don't think anyone here would feel confident in doing that. 
If you're in your right mind, I know there are some people that do do nonsense like that. I, I remember we, went, we, we got told about a beach. There's a beach near us. They say, listen, don't go to that particular beach because that was a nude beach. Amen. Listen, I turned the car straight around, went to Bridlington instead. Amen. Because I don't want to do that. No one in their right mind would feel confident in doing that walking out. So when you cover yourself, there is a, bit, a level of confidence. There is a level of dignity walking around like that. Uh, listen, uh, the, 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 in Pro, Proverbs 31, uh, the Bible describes the attribute of the virtuous woman. Someone who's got so many things going for her. I love the verse in verse number 25 of Proverbs 31. It says, strength and honour are her clothing. Come on, when you put something on, it gives you a bit of dignity. It gives you a bit of worth. It gives you something. You know, when Jacob wanted to distinguish his son Joseph amongst the others, what did he do? Gave him a robe, gave him a new cloak to wear, gave him something to dignify him so he can feel dignified, a robe of many colours. We see Jesus tell us a story in Luke 15 about the prodigal son. How about this son is grown up in his father's house and he said, listen, I want to do what I want to do. I want to go out and live riotous. I want to go and just live, just give me what is mine and let me do it. The father being so gracious allowed him to do so. And we know the story. He went out, wasted all his father's good, wasted all his father's money. And he came to his senses, the Bible says, saying, listen, I'm going to go back home where I had it all. I am not even worthy to be called a son. Call me a slave. And as he went, uh, the son said that. And we see in Luke 15, verse number 21 the Bible says and the son said to his father I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son look at verse number 22 but the father said to his servants bring out the best robe and put him on him Come on, the son came, he was lost, he, was, uh, he lost all his dignity, he lost everything about him. But when he goes to the father, the father says, put some dignity back on him. Come on, get the picture of what the father in heaven does for each and every one of us. Come on, before we met Jesus, before we were saved, we were broke, busted and disgusted. But he came and gave us dignity that the world can't do. That's the Father's heart. We come to Him naked. We come to Him wretched. But He wants to clothe us with dignity. Clothes represent dignity. Clothes represent uh, uh, confidence or honour and so on. Another thing clothes does uh, is protect us. You know, in my house, uh, uh, my wife, she has this thing. She, she tells me, she says, don't be fooled by the sun in the UK. <laughs> What she's saying is when you wake up in the morning, you open the curtains, you see the sun is there. She's like, don't be fooled. Because many times you're like, the sun is there. Okay, shorts and t-shirts time. Shorts and wind. You step outside and then that wind just licks you. And it is freezing. She's never caught. It could be 50 degrees outside. She's got a coat somewhere tucked away just in case. And every time we send the kids anywhere and so on, make sure, she's shouting for them, make sure the kids bring their coat. I'm like, it's fine, the sun is out. She's like, don't be fooled by the sun in the UK. Because when you wear clothing, it acts as a protection. How many people know that? Come on, some people have come from hot countries and you came and felt the cold for the first time. How many of you have to go to Primark or somewhere and buy something new to get some protection? Come on now. Because as you come out, if you put something around you, it protects you. It has, there's many things we have to protect us. There's many layers of clothing, items of clothing we have to protect us. It gives us a layer of protection around us. If we go back to the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy, they have many different laws. Laws concerning food, laws concerning rituals, laws concerning rituals. They have some miscellaneous laws as well. So if you look at Deuteronomy, 24, it talks about how to manage uh, uh, when people owe you money and they're asking of a, a security or something to guarantee the debt. It's saying there's things you can take, but there's some things you shouldn't take or keep. So look at this in the New Living Translation, Deuteronomy 24 and verse number 12. The Bible says, if your neighbour is poor and gives you his cloak as a security for a loan, don't keep the cloak overnight. Return the cloak to his owner by sunset so he can stay warm through the night and bless you. And the Lord your God will count you uh, uh, as righteous. You see, because we understand that clothing provides, in the natural, it provides some protection. 
It provides a barrier against the elements of the world, a barrier against the, 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 the forces of, of nature. Paul on his missionary journeys, he understood this and many times he talked about being persecuted, being poorly clothed and there was a time where he wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy verse number 4. He told him many, many things but one of the things he told him was found in verse number 13. It says, please bring the cloak that I left in Carpus at Troas when you come. Why? Because I'm cold. I need to be protected. So when we think about clothes in the natural, it gives us dignity, yes, but it also has a layer of protection. How many know our Father in heaven wants to clothe us so wherever we go, we can be protected? Can you say amen in this place? Come on. He wants to put us underneath His wing and guide us. He wants to put us beneath His covering that we can be guided in His security. Psalm Psalms 91 and verse number 4 says this, He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. This is the heart of God. He wants to protect us and put some covering over us so that we can be protected. Clothing provides dignity. It provides protection. But it also provides authority. You know, as you look at uh, uh, people of what they wear, you can see people are distinguished or levels of authority are distinguished by what they wear. You know, I was watching a, uh, an interesting documentary some time ago, and it's a documentary about uh, immigration. Amen. And one of the things they told or one of the things they said about immigration, you know, there's many ways to catch people who are uh, um, committing an offence or don't have the right paperwork and so on. And, but one of the most effective ways that they do it, these guys are cruel, these are one of the most effective ways they do it, they go out onto the street corner and they just stand there. As the hustle and bustle is going through the town, they just stand there. And um, what they see is they look at the reaction of people. And the reason they can do that is because they're wearing uniform. It says immigration or it says something on, they're just wearing uniform and they just stand there. And the thing is, when you see the uniform, you see the authority that stands behind the uniform. So if you are committing an offence, you don't have the correct paperwork, you could be going about your day. As soon as you see that authority, you start to shake and, and things start to happen. You start to sweat and, and they say they see it all over people. Some people cross the road. And some people start to, they turn around and go the other way. Some people try and act like nothing's happening and they do that whistling sound as if like I'm whistling, nothing's happening, here, nothing to see here. But when you see uh, the uniform, you see authority. How many know when you have something on, it can show the authority that you have. You can walk into a place and it'll be fine. But if a police officer walks in dressed in uniform, you know that they have a different type of authority. How do you know that? They've not said a word. They've not done anything. It's by what you can see that they're wearing. So as you understand, uh, clothing can show uniform. It can show the power and dominion we have. Many times in the Word of God, we see people are characterised by authority with what they're wearing. We see priests have some holy garments that they should wear, separating them from other people. We see army soldiers, they wear different things, separating them. We see royalty wear different colours, different things based on what we're wearing. So I've said all of this to kind of go back to our text now to understand this man's plight. Look at verse number 27 again said uh, there's a certain man from a city who had demons for a long time and he had no clothes. So we see a man with no dignity. We see a man with no protection, no authority, no dominion. How many know there's people in this city, in this world, walking around naked? I'm not talking about physically, although that is the case sometimes. I told you, listen, we're living in a world, a, a crazy world. But I'm talking spiritually. People are walking around naked. No covering over them. No thing to close them. No thing to uh, hide their shame. Nothing uh, to give them dignity, authority. Nothing to protect them. They're walking around naked. And the worst thing is they don't even know it. Walking around naked, there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a kid's story about the emperor's new clothes where some 
uh, con man came to an emperor who was proud, uh, was always saying, I'm the big man on campus. Uh, this uh, con man came and saw this and said, listen, I've got some new clothes for you to wear. But the thing is, only wise people can see this. If you're ignorant, you can't see the clothes. So the con man pulled out his fake clothing, gave it to this emperor, and because he wanted to act like he was wise, he was just walking around naked. <laughs> you know, that's like people today, they're walking around, doing their things, doing their normal uh, run-of-the-mill, their normal lives, not understanding there's no covering over your life. There's nothing there to cover your shame. But how did we get in this state? How did this happen? I want to consider with you secondly about the first thing. You see, there was a time where being naked wasn't actually a problem. Listen, when there's a newborn baby, you know, fresh baby and so on, and, uh, you know, maybe they're you know, in the middle of changing or something, they, they crawl away or something like that, and they're, they're, they're butt naked and so on, you see the little bum, they're like, oh, that's cute. You know, oh, look, look at the little, little, little butt cheeks. Oh, that's cute. All right, right? How many know when that guy grows up, he's like 25 years old, that ain't cute no more? That's not right. <laughs> Cover it, put some clothes on. Come on now. Because there comes a time where, you know, being naked wasn't a problem at the very beginning because as a child, there's the innocence, there's this, there's the, you know. But as you start to get understanding, you start to get knowledge, why are you still walking around naked, bro? So coming back to the physical, that's, you know, as I go in summertime, summertime is coming. There's going to be some young girls as young as 14, 15, whose parents or whose guardians or someone at the house, let them leave the house like that. And they go and you think, I'm thinking, dear Lord, why are you walking the streets naked? Where's the covering? Where's the protection? Listen, I don't mind when my daughter gets a bit older being the bad guy. I don't mind saying, you best turn yourself around, go back upstairs and put some clothes on. I don't mind doing that. That's my job, God-given right. And I will uphold that. Because I want to provide not only just physical protection for my daughter. Come on, there has to be a spiritual guidance. She needs to understand. Listen, because help me know, listen, when people go out and they flaunt their stuff, uh, you know, that's a spiritual thing. They're, trying to, they're just trying to push something on there. Do you know that? It is something that's trying to uh, portray something. Again, both men and women, there's something we're trying to portray. And the sadness is people are trying to portray things that they don't even want to do. They feel like, I have to do this in order to be validated, in order to be counted as worthy, in order to look like the person on my Instagram feed. I have to dress like this. Come on, it's quiet. Come on now. (laughs) But what happened here? There was a time where being naked wasn't a problem. Go back to the beginning. Very beginning. You want to understand the nature of God? You want to understand? Just go back to the book of the beginnings, which is Genesis. I'll prove it to you. Genesis 2, 2, verse 25. Talking about Adam and Eve. It says, and they were both, what? Naked. The man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. So God created Adam and Eve, the first people on earth, he created them and he didn't see the need to make any designer clothes for them. Come on, God created Adam and Eve and he didn't see the need to put on any Gucci. He didn't see the need to design any, put your favourite designer in it. He didn't see the need to put anything on them. The Bible says they were both naked and they were not ashamed. Why was that? Because now if we see that, we see a couple walking around naked, we'll phone the police, you can get arrested, indecent exposure. But back then, it was no problem. What was the difference? Because God was their dignity. Can you say amen in this place? God was their covering. God was their protection. God was their authority. God was the one that covered them. And this only became a problem when they started to step out of the covering of God. As soon as you step out of the covering of God, then your nakedness is now exposed. So it becomes a problem when we move away from the willing will of God and we have a life that is now exposed. They stepped out of the covering of God and they were exposed. Many people are living a life that is exposed. They're outside the will of God and they feel I need to cover up. They feel they need to do something because they're outside and they're exposed. When God saw the sin of mankind, I find it interesting what he did. The first thing he did was judge. 
he judged the sin of mankind. He, he told the man what's happening. He told the woman. He told the devil. But the first thing he did after that, who remembers the first thing he did after that? Come on, he put some clothes on them, didn't he? He put some clothes on them. Genesis 3, verse number 21, it says, And also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Now, even when they stepped out, they were already covered by himself. He was there covering them. But they decided, or we decided to step out of the will of God, step out of the covering. And his heart is for his people that says, I can't let you walk out butt naked like this. I can't let you walk out with no dignity, no protection, no authority. What I'm going to have to do is find a covering for you. So he says, the Bible says that he made tunics of skin and clothe them. You see, it's very uh, mysterious there, but in order to provide uh, tunics of skin, something had to die uh, to offer up that skin. Uh, so back then, uh, he provided a uh, skin of some sort of animal. I don't know what animal it was, uh, but sin left them exposed. Uh, so there needed to be some covering going on. Uh, how many know God is still providing a uh, covering today? Can you say amen in this place? Uh, but listen, it's not the covering of some bull or some animal. Jesus Christ has laid down his life that we can now put on Jesus Christ on our own uncovered body. Don't you thank God that in our time of nakedness, in our time of wretchedness, Jesus Christ came and says, don't worry, I've got you covered. Literally, he came and said, listen, you're naked right now. You're, dis you're not distinguished right now. You have no authority. There's no dignity right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm clothed in majesty right now. I have it all around me. I'm going to take my majesty off and so I'm going to come down, be unclothed for you so that you can be clothed. I'm going to take my majesty off so that you can put on righteousness. Don't you thank God for that in this place? Come on, so when we reject the love of Jesus Christ, what we're saying is, listen, it's all right, Jesus, I'm going to continue on living my life naked. Come on, people walking around naked. Sin uncovers and leaves us exposed. And now we're naked. And you see, that's what's going to happen at the end of the age. You know when God finally wraps this up? Who, how many know that God is going to wrap this thing up real soon? How many people know that in this place? Come on, let's come in soon. But at the end of the age, there's going to be a dress code. <laughs> come on, you can't just walk in anyhow. You can't just come in anyhow. There's a dress code involved at the end of the age. I love it. It's typified in this parable, Matthew chapter 22, where Jesus gives a, a, a likening. The kingdom of God is like unto. He says many times, or the kingdom of God is like, or the kingdom of God, and so on and so forth. And here he says it in verse number two. We're going to read verse number two and then skip down to verse number, 19, uh, verse number nine. Sorry, Matthew 22, verse number two. It says, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. Verse number nine, it says, Go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So the servers went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But look at this, verse number 11. But when the king came to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. And so he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And the king said to his servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is a picture of the end times. This is a picture of when God is going to uh, blow that ark, uh, that, that trumpet, he's going to make that, he's going to come down, descend, uh, and it's going to be people who are clothed in Jesus Christ, who have the wedding garment on, and they can walk into the women, wedding because they're dressed appropriately. Uh, but then there's going to be others who are going to try and get into this wedding, but they're naked. 
and God sees. God lets us know that there is a dress code. You can't come anyhow. You can't just do this. You know, there's a famous uh, saying that uh, people who think that we're condemning saying, listen, the Bible says you can come anyhow. Yes, that's how you first come. Listen, when this man of our text first came to Jesus, uh, he had no clothes. But after he had an encounter with Jesus Christ, the Bible lets us know uh, he was seated at Jesus' feet. Uh, oh, he was in his right mind and he was what? Clothed. Come on, don't come in here naked and leave naked. Don't come in here uh, uh, exposed, uh, sin in your life, uh, walking uh, with no clothes on and leave, uh, forgetting to come to the wardrobe of Jesus Christ. Because when we get to the wedding feast, when we get to that last time, uh, the Bible says the king is going to come and look at what everybody's wearing. What are you going to be wearing at the wedding feast? Or more to the question, who are you going to be wearing at the wedding feast? I want to look thirdly with you at heavenly garments. Because as we see in our text, this man in verse number 35 was seated at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. This is a state in which Jesus wants to take us. He wants to put some clothes on us. Come on now. And I actually do mean that physically and spiritually. Come on. I don't want to leave the physical as just a joke I used at the beginning. No, there's, there should be a, a, a difference in your wardrobe when you meet Jesus Christ. Your wardrobe should change. Come on, we don't want to, we don't want to continue. Uh, you know, the, uh, I'm not a fan of, you know, celebrity who, 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 celebrities who claim, who claim Jesus, right? Because uh, they might have a, an album, they'll release one song talking about Jesus. They might mention Jesus in one song. They might say, I prayed or something. And the very next song, the very next music video they release, and it's like, what on earth is this? It doesn't make no sense. You're raising hands talking about Jesus and now you're shaking. Hey, listen, I don't want to... <laughs> Come on, your wardrobe should change. So I want to spend a little bit of time on the physical things. There should be things that you're no longer willing to wear anymore. There should be things that should be relegated to the bin that used to hang in your wardrobe. That little black dress that you used to have. Listen, you might have to throw that one in the bin. Come on now. I mean, there's not enough. Listen, how do you, you pay so much and there's so little material. <laughs> It's like, wait, you're paying 100 pounds. It's like what they use, a couple of pieces of thread and that's it. A, 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 a bottle cap to cut this, and then that's it. So on the physical side, yes, Jesus wants to clothe you. Yes, amen. Men and women, he wants to clothe us. <laughs> but also on the spiritual side, he wants to put a covering over us. He wants to clothe us. Listen to Isaiah 61 and verse number 10. It says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Why? For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. Listen to the imagery of that. It's talking about how we're getting ready for something, uh, 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 an important time. Uh, a bride is getting rude, ready for her wedding. A bridegroom is getting ready also. And it talks about how he puts things on and clothes himself. And it says uh, it is the garment of salvation and the robe of righteousness. Jesus wants to put on the garment of salvation on each and every one of us. The robe of righteousness, it has to be on each and every one of us. We need to go out there and no longer expose our nakedness, no longer uncover our nakedness, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ as it says in Romans chapter 13 and verse number 14 it says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Let's put on Jesus in this place. Many times we go and disrobe. You know, there's a possibility that you have put on Jesus once upon a time, but as you go into situations of life, you start to disrobe. How many know you're meant to have Jesus on in church? You're meant to have Jesus on at work. You're meant to have Jesus on in college. You're meant to have Jesus on and you're home. Don't disrobe. Don't take off Jesus when you go to your various places. 
he's not like a raincoat. It stopped raining, I can take it off. No, Jesus Christ needs to be adorned continually, 24-7. Why? So when people see us, they begin to say, man, this was the one that used to be demon possessed and used to be out there in the graves used to be naked but now he's seated at Jesus's feet in his right mind and clothed give him praise for that in this place right now thank you Jesus Jesus came to put some clothes on us and I thank God for that and look at this in Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 5 It says, he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Jesus is saying, if you're able to overcome, if you're able to go forward, pursue on, then you shall be clothed. You should have dignity, have protection, have authority. This can be only found when we put on Jesus Christ. You know, I want to end as I wrap up, as I consider without Jesus Christ, you know, people look for other things to cover themselves with. Listen, because we're not naive to our nakedness. We know we're naked. Come on, when Adam and Eve went through and did did what they did, what did they do? Come on, they tried to find fig leaves and cover themselves because they know they're naked. They saw it. They can see this wretchedness. So in this life, there are people, this world is full of people trying to cover themselves with all sorts. Makeup. I have no, I have, you know, I'm, not, I'm, not for, I'm not against makeup, I'm saying, but if it's like, like I can't live without this stuff, then we've got a bit of a problem. Um, relationships. It's, I just want someone to, someone to just cover me. I just need to just cover my nakedness. <laughs> uh, wealth. If I can just make it, if I can just prove to everyone I've got the money, I'll be good. It's just trying to cover yourself. There's so many things in this world you're trying to cover yourself with, but it won't do. The only thing that's going to give us our dignity back, protect us, give us some authority, is when we put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is our covering. So today, God wants to say to you, listen, I want to put some clothes on you. I want to cover you. I want to take you under my feathers, under my wings. I want to be your refuge. I want to be your your shield, your strength. For those of us that have Jesus Christ, let's not disrobe. Let's let's keep Jesus Christ on. And for those that do not, uh, well, it's time to put some clothes on. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes in this place. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God.